Good evening, everyone. So, as Jody told, I'm Tania de Beauvais, and I would like to thank Shemes Kiri and his team, for, as well as uh, Ashley Hans, for having me tonight. It's a pleasure being here in this exhibition and have this conversation with you. Yes, um, thank you, Shemes, for inviting me. It has been a great setting up, and thank you for Gerhard and his team and uh, the whole team of the uh, Kunstverein uh, was very, very, very helpful, and so yeah, it was a good work, a good week work, uh, work week. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're very lucky to have this discussion in the middle of the exhibition, so you can already see it. Of course, you will see it better once all this furniture will be gone, but at least you can feel the spirit and um, and see most of it. Um, maybe we can start with the title of this exhibition because I think it says a lot about what you've been trying to do here. So it's Ob underscore scenery, uh, which is a very poly polysemic uh, title. Do you want to, take, to talk about it? Um, polysemic. Polysemic it means uh, with many, very, uh, a lot of different meanings. meanings. Yes, I like to play with words a lot. Um, and uh, not only with the words, also with the symbols. Uh, they are uh, often very ambivalent. Obscenery. Um, first of all, scenery is um, an, 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 an inszenierung. It's um, setting up a scene, um, um, giving the paintings um, a set a setup like a theatrical setup, and for everyone, for the visitors who come in, to be able to have a, a, a whole experience, to experience the whole room, and um, by moving through this installation, make up their own story or thoughts, um, and so it's not just uh, paintings on the wall. But it should be a kind of a room for experience. And uh, the other, the op, is um, might also mean something come from obscure, so something that is hidden, something that is not seen right away. So you see this installation sometimes, uh, you know, like the cur a curtain or. Here you have a kind of a furniture where something happens in the back. Um, so that, and also this painting over there, you see a hand uh, tearing back a curtain and showing a scene, a scenery happening behind. So it's about mm, many things, but sort of. Um, Maybe, as Dario said earlier, maybe it's also a, a lot about the unconscious uh, in this exhibition. And the other word that comes up is the obscene, the obstöne, because I work a lot with um, symbols of sexuality, and not only symbols, I used to work um, uh, in my films with uh, sexual images quite radical sexual images, queer images. Um, now it's more in the symbols. Um, and the references are Bataille or Genet or Desartes, like French writers, 
in 20th century. No, this art is not 20th century. Um, so these are sort of my references. Thank you. Um, I would like to go back to one of the meanings you've been telling about, about the obscene. So you've been talking about sexuality and how it fuels uh, your films a lot, uh, including Daddy Dust, uh, your most famous uh, feature film. And um, but in your in your text and in your words and works, you put in parallel two obscenities: the one about sexuality, but also the one about neoliberalism, about today's world. Um, so how do you put together this dichotomy? Um, the book that I have been inspired by for a long time is uh, by Jean-François Lyotard. It's actually a quite an old book from 74, and it's called Libidinal Economy. I think in German it's actually the Ökonomie des Wunsches. Um, and uh, where he, I mean, I can't really paraphrase it, but basically it's on the one hand side the idea that all power relations are fired by libidinal energies, and uh, the other idea of um, libidinal energies that are not only um, um, in effect by um, letting go, by allowing yourself uh, to go for what you wish for, for uh, what you yearn for, uh, but also by holding back your wishes. Um, it's a bit complex, but uh, I'm, I'm trying to make sense out of it. It's, um, it has to do with uh, this neoliberal capitalism that we are in now, um, more and more. I mean, it has started already, like, maybe in the 70s or so, where it's not so much about production, but it's actually about the... Um, the exchange itself. So making money out of making money, making out of money. Like derivatives. Here, uh, this painting, for instance, is called Deviant Derivatives. Derivatives are financial uh, assets um, that uh, where you actually, it's like betting on on betting on money. So, and I, in a pro provo provocative way, I um, put this in context with sexuality that is not derived from heterosexual um, reproductive sexuality, but from so-called perverse sexuality that is not, not at all there for any Thing like reproduction it doesn't have any meaning beside. So one reason for doing this, of course, is sort of to uh, evaluate, put value on queer sexuality, um, which is has been seen as yeah, perversion, as a negative word, as dirty, as uh, or even criminal. So it's it's about uh, putting value to something that has been devalued. This, um, this question of value is indeed something uh, very uh, important um, through your works, through your three decades of career now. Excuse me? It's been three decades that you've been creating work, so there is a, a whole body of work. And as we were saying, sexuality is always very present, but I feel that in this show it's more in a dimmed way. It's, uh, it's present, but more quietly in a way. It's more in a... Uh, more quiet. More quiet, yeah. Less, less obvious, less visually seen at, at first glance. It's more undercover, in a way. Yes, I mean, it has been undercover for quite a while now. Um, I mean, um, my 
radically sexual works were mostly in the 90s when I was in London and uh, doing all these experiments, sexual experiments. Um, but um, there was this moment where I felt um, I don't want to be just classified as you know, a queer artist. And therefore, I was trying to find ways of being more abstract, of dealing with sexuality, but also gender issues uh, in a more abstract way. And also by switching to painting to try to yeah, get into the art world. Um, so it is, it is quite um, maybe a boring move, I don't know. Um, but I guess my work is still fired by these works that I've done. And even though I'm not showing any of this here, some people know my work, or you can even find it on the internet. I'm sure you can find bits and pieces. Um, or like um, some of my films you can buy uh, via internet. There is some distribution. So I don't think it's necessary. It was just a phase that I, I was uh, where I was working like that. But now, yes, I I wanted to take part in the in the art world or in the art market. Um, and um, as I was uh, invited to take part in the docu documentary last year, I am lucky uh, that in my age I am now. Uh, I have not galleries, um, although I find it really, really weird, the art market. I think it's a scary, very, very scary power cooker, a, a, a scary power cooker. I think it is uh, frightening. It's so much about power, of course, and uh, only very few people can be successful because that's the idea of capitalism. If there is more, then you can't get the value up. But it's true that uh, you being at the documentables in Athens and Castle last year uh, made your work known to more people. And indeed, you started collaborating with, uh, with galleries, uh, which is also a way to have your work known by even more people. So, of course, my, the art market is like every market, so it has its dark, its dark signs. Uh, but it's also a way to, to fuel uh, the work and have it you know, mostly. Actually, your gallery introduced us, so it was good. <laughs> and talking about your paintings, um, I'm always amazed by how oh, oh, you paint, how oh, you paint, mixing so different um, techniques, uh, very ab abstract, almost uh, expressionist, expressionist touches with some pop elements and it's a kind of mise en abyme, such as what you were telling, this hand opening the curtain, mirroring the curtain here, so your paintings mirroring life in a way. So I'm not sure you were trained as a painter originally. In a way, originally I felt I was a painter, but I was painting on paper, you know, I wasn't painting on, on, on canvas. Um, I, I, I knew Maria Lasnik and I was very, very inspired by her and she was my big uh, idol. But um, somehow when I started in the late 70s, it was, painting was quite out and this is when I then went into filmmaking. But I tried everything actually, especially at the beginning, so like especially the year 79, I, it was like an explosion and I did objects and writings and um, yeah, all kinds of things and, and films and so I was experimenting with lots of different media at the beginning, performance, um, uh, performance in public space, I did some um, uh, performances in Salzburg in public space, for instance. And now you're back. So, um, so it brings me to another question I wanted to ask you. So, it's your first show in your hometown. 
Um, so how have you imagined that in terms of your biography and everything you've been living since you left, living in New York, living in London, now being based in, uh, in Vienna um, and Berlin also. So how did it happen? And how is your biography fused or not this show? I don't understand the question. Being, having a show in your hometown, has it a meaning? Uh, has it influenced the show? Or is it something parallel to what's around us? Oh, I'm sorry, I really, I just somehow, I may, I may be tired. Can you say it again? I'm sorry. Sure. <laughs> Maybe it's not clear also the question, and it's a foreign language for you as well. My question, to put it simple, is showing for the first time uh, a show that scale in your hometown, is it important in the way you conceive the show? It is very important for me. Um, it was very emotional to prepare the show because, yeah, I, I, all my life I sort of wanted to get as far away as possible from Salzburg. Um, <laughs> for obvious reasons. Um, yeah, we have outside, have you seen the new poster of the FPÖ party? We have outside a really horrible, horrible poster where it says, uh, don't be angry, we have the solution. Which is really horrible. So, I mean, it just makes me shiver. Um, I think it is, a, it is a very good timing because maybe before I would have just not wanted to do a show here. I, I think it is, it's a shame has um, um, persuaded me. I mean, that, that sounds as if I'm really arrogant, as if I could say, oh no, I don't want to have a show in, in, in an art space like that. This is, is, is silly. It's really silly. But in a way, it feels like the right timing. It feels like I'm ready to, also, to face also questions of my past, growing up here in a kind of um, partly very um, questionable um, family situations, um, which I just, yeah, I, I never wanted to have anything to do with it and I'm sort of ready now to talk about it. I mean, Seamus asked me so many questions and, and then I was like, oh no, but don't tell anyone, you know, uh, about what my grandfather did and so, uh, um, I think it is a very important show and, um, and that was also the reason why this is a brown show, if, if anyone was doubting. Uh, asking why is everything brown? It's yes. kind of a way to, it was a an abstract to way to, to deal with the situation. Indeed, it was a question I wanted to ask you because, of course, everyone is wondering why are we in a brown room? Yeah, because we're in a brown city. It's still the brown. I mean, Austria also, I mean, the whole middle Europe, of course, it has. But Salzburg, oh, there is someone wants to say something. Ah, good. Ja, verstehst du das? Ja. Gut. Naja, um, vielleicht solltest du sagen, dass du beim Spielmannszug warst. Ja. Das ist eine ganz spezielle Geschichte. Ja, ich war wearing Dirndl und ich war doing the whole folk, folk music and Advent singen und Spielmannszug. Many people maybe don't know what Spielmannszug is. It's a very. It's uh, where you um, doing these Aufmärsche uh, with drums and uh, so uh, playing, playing metal flutes and um, it's kind of, yeah, kind of a proto-fascist um, um, Verein. Um, I don't know if it still exists, it probably, it probably does. Um, but anyway, I mean, I was totally ignorant and I grew up, you know, I was like uh, totally unpolitical and not knowing the connections of it all. 
So yes, I traveled very far. critical Salzburg, uh, to say Salzburg is so fascist because it's everywhere, he says. Which is true. Especially as I'm talking to you all, who are obviously all doing something to, uh, against this, and um, this is why you're all here. You know, it's like it, it's uh, it's clear. So I'm talking to the wrong people, of course. Just saying that I don't speak German, so I'm sorry I didn't get everything that was exchanged. But I think I got the idea. Sorry about that. Um, So yes, you mentioned um, earlier this discussion we had today about this space uh, being also a kind of unconscious uh, part, uh, uh, hidden. When I first entered the show, I felt I was uh, inside a, a grotto. Uh, I felt inside, uh, you know, a place where a um, pagan ritual could have happened. So would you imagine, for instance, doing performances in the show? Because it really calls something to happen between the, the bodies, because it's immersive and, it, and you were saying to me, uh, visitors, us all, are also actors of this show. Well, I can only say yes. Um, I, I am not planning any performances uh, and exactly because, yeah, as you said, it's uh, for me, everyone who walks in here is the performer who makes this uh, show happen. Um, yes, and with me at performances, I mean, sometimes I do one and then I, I always wish I hadn't uh, agreed to do one, so... 
Okay, this time, luckily, no one tried to, tried to persuade me. Okay. And th there is something that, uh, Seamus, you, you wrote in your text about the exhibition, saying that we are all political creatures, and I thought it was very interesting, uh, because, again, you were saying, um, Ashley, on that this is also a political show, and being all here, as you were saying, it's a political act, uh, in a way. Um, about maybe, so we've talked about us being inside the show, but to go back to the show itself, uh, you worked on the scenography uh, with Jacob Lena Knebel. Um, maybe you can tell a little bit about this? Yes, um, Jacob Lena Knebel is uh, my wife. <laughs> and uh, she works on, um, in this area between art and design. And we had a lot of discussions about yeah, um, what is art, what is design, and uh, can you separate this? And I was always like, of course you can separate it, because a designer is someone who works for money. Uh, of course, uh, in the meantime, I understood that uh, you're also working for money uh, when you do art. And um, there are, it is, it's a problem to uh, think that art is separate from design. I mean, art also has its fashions, and um, art is also um, um, beautifying uh, flats and houses, and um, art is there to, to show your power. People buy art to show that they have uh, spending power and so forth. So. Um, yeah, we started working together in that way that she helps me with doing the dis display. Um, like uh, this idea of the wallpaper here, um, it, it wouldn't occur to me uh, because I was I'm sort of, I come from a very old fashioned idea of art. You know, art is this erratic um, um, piece that you only have, this original and um, so now, working with her, I'm sort of uh, playing with the idea of reproduction, uh, reproduction, and uh, also reminding myself that even in films you have uh, reproductions and uh, sort of having, especially this old film there, um, it uh, somehow has to do with um, this uh, multiplication of, of the images through the technical process. And this uh, reappropriation uh, of the space, because the painting uh, is a two-dimensional work, but it's also a sculpture, because um, what's behind the painting, uh, it's a pedestal, but it's a work as well. It's the same with the painting over there, with uh, the red curtain. So what about this kind of... Um, expansion going out of the frame I, as you also yourself went out of your own frame yes it's, uh, I like to use this formula trans medium trans uh, genre transgender um, to upset these classifications it's like um, there's a painting that is it becomes a sculpture there is a, a wallpaper that becomes a painting there is a a pedestal that becomes a furniture, or even this wall, as we decided to leave it empty, this brown wall, it's almost like a, a, a monochrome painting. Um, so, and, and, and the walls of, of the museum, the walls of the, of the gallery, or the walls of the museum uh, in general, is, is coming out, like here, it's coming out from the wall, and is it a painting, is it a wall? Uh, or this wall over there that is 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 um, uh, kept. Um, what is it? Is it a, is it a part of the furniture? Is it part of the architecture? Um, so it is really about this upsetting of classifications. Maybe also mainly to deal with the idea of transgender, and and uh, to deal with um, to upset the, the bipolar 
here are the men and here are the women. I'm always trying to sort of find a way to um, break through this uh, um, um, uh, contradiction or contradiction, uh, no, no, not a contradiction. Um, um, yeah, having 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 two uh, opposite opposites, which uh, is is absolutely for me is crazy idea. To, I'm not a man or a woman. I mean, it's crazy. So it's very important you for me to, to yeah, thank you <laughs> to upset this again and again, and uh, therefore I'm also trying to upset it with with the styles I'm using uh, in the paintings, but also in the setup and and you mixing the media. And this mix of media um, makes me want to ask about this mysterious sculpture over there that uh, for me is a, a kind of alchemical work. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, it's a coffee table um, with a shit sausage sitting on it. Um, quite a phallic sausage sitting on the coffee table or in the coffee table. And it's actually a treasure chest. Um, uh, there is a diamond in there, and it is shitting gold. So again, it's upsetting the ideas of you know, it's like a shit shitting gold is kind of an inversion of um, what what you usually how you usually think of of value. What what is of value? And um, what was the other thing I wanted to say? What was the last bit of the question? Uh, just to talk about this work, just and also you have mentioned yeah. uh, alchemy as like the alchemy. part of it. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, like this alchemy, making gold out of shit. It's um, for me art is a bit like that. You know, so if you're lucky, you're making some gestures, and it's suddenly very valuable and uh, costs a lot of money. Um, and it is um, I, I, I took this use of gold actually I took it from uh, Basquiat um, who said uh, the moment I started to paint with gold all that money started to come in so I'm trying to do this <laughs> ok I think there is a message here <laughs> <laughs> And, and also again, as a bit the alchemy of, of, of the economy, this economy that is so crazy and obscene, really, uh, where um, money is made out of money. I mean, it's just crazy, you know. So something there in this direction. And most of you haven't seen yet, but you have hidden works behind. And I'm interested uh, by the works that we can see in the little inclusion over here, uh, especially two drawings that look like um, children's drawing. And I was curious to hear more about this. Yes, I, I like to um, um, experiment with how free, uh, in inverted commas, how free can I be, how spontaneous can I be, because I, I am not really a very spontaneous person. And um, I envy uh, artists who, who and, and especially male artists like yeah, Jonathan Mesia or so, who are just like uh, shitting a bit of paint here and there. There's this lovely video on YouTube where he is. Uh, he has all these canvases there, and then he's singing with the music, and here a little bit of paint, and there a little bit of paint, and I'm like, ah, I want to be able to be like this. So it's, it's also a bit of a, a trying to appropriate this, this gesture and, and asking the questions, uh, what does it mean being spontaneous? Can we be spontaneous, or is that also a, a performance? And with me, it's definitely performance when I'm trying to be spontaneous. Um, I don't know. It's okay not to be spontaneous. <laughs> Is it okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, and it makes me want to talk about humor because we haven't mentioned it, but it's something that really infused your work since the beginning. 
in many different ways. In your films, there is some lots of absurd situations, or even this turd sitting on a coffee table and shooting gold. It's it's very funny. Um, so maybe you can develop about this as well because I think it's important. Yes, it has always been very important for me. You can do so much with humor that you can't do otherwise. Um, and because it's uh, what does humor, it's like Batai was all uh, talking about this laughter, you know, it is an oscillation. It's, a, it's obviously there's something happening with your body, it's shaking you. And, and this, this uh, um, um, this movement, this oscillating movement is, that is something that uh, makes a dynamic possible, is, is, is that loosens everything up that, uh, where you can get out of, of um, strict uh, structures. Um, and the other thing with humor is um, also a gender thing. It's, it's not so... Um, easy for women to make fun out of themselves. Um, I, I guess it's because uh, women have this role of, of, of somehow um, trying to be so perfect, or I don't know what it is. It's, uh, uh, com comedy is very often done by men and um, I yeah, again, it's, it's an, an appropriation. And also, especially the format of parody is something that, um, where you can do, obviously you can do, deal with very serious things, um, but get away with it. Or radical things, or very obscene things, but you can get away with it when people laugh. I think it's true that the message um, is stronger uh, when you do it that way because something that I really like in the show is it's political, it's uh, talking about today's society, uh, but it's not yelling it at your face. It's more subtle than that and I really, really appreciate this. And also the way that when you arrive you have this frontal view of this beautiful painting uh, uh, expanded uh, around as a wallpaper. I think it's very mysterious painting. And then you turn around and you, you take on what's happening. But maybe we can go back to this one painting, which you've made. it's one of the works you've made specially for the show. So I think it's important we talk about this as well. Yes, it's... Um It's actually one of the works that where it's really not so much about either sexuality or, or the economy or any of these things. It's more for me, it's more about now thinking, getting older and thinking about death and, and the universe and, and uh, yeah, relating to time and, and um, uh, the Vergänglichkeit. Um, so it's probably the most difficult to talk about um, this figure that is in front of me where I'm hiding behind. It's, it's a bit taken from Philip, Ga uh, yeah, Philip Gassen who was painting these Ku Klux Klan uh, figures, comics figures actually. Um, I think it's to do with maybe like Philip Gaston um, seeing myself as part of the society. Uh, I'm not anymore thinking, oh, I'm this artist and I have nothing to do uh, with all that and all that power. And uh, but I am in it, and especially in this sort of capitalism we are in, it's very hard to step out of it and criticize it from outside. Um, the consumerism has just overtaken us so much that uh, or the technologies is like anyone who tries to not take part in whatever, having a, a mobile phone or anything, it is very, very difficult to not use a mobile phone or the e e email. And for a long time I tried not to 
So it's, you're taking part, you're in it. Uh, but what do you do when you realize you're in it? You're just a perpetrator, like, maybe not like everyone else, but uh, of course you're trying to um, find ways to do things differently, or to criti criticize and, 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 and be self-critical. I'm very self-critical. Um, but um, how self-critical can you be and still do work? Because, I mean, many people can't do work anymore because they say, it's like, what can I do? You know, can it still do anything? Um, so it's a kind of a, a weird self-portrait. It's a self-portrait, but a very, a very, yeah, it's, it's, it's almost a mystery for me as well. That's good too, to keep mystery. And, uh, and maybe we will leave the mystery and, uh, and ask uh, you if you have questions for the artists. Yes, because we have about a quarter of an hour we can talk. <laughs> Ja, vielleicht muss ich nicht, vielleicht will ich. Okay. Ja, okay, ja, danke. Ja, das ist wahr. Das wollte ich sagen. Ich weiß nicht. Danke. Ja, yeah, it is uh, this kind of trying to explain the art again and again. I also don't feel comfortable with it, but it is maybe not so much about explaining, but about um, giving everyone a context because um, there are yeah there are other artworks and other artists and there is uh, the world outside and there's where I come from and all this makes uh, is in the work so sometimes the work is easier to access when, when one talks about it. Um, I hope it's not talking too much that you can't then deal with it anymore but um, I hope you still feel you, you can deal with it uh, with your own thoughts um, Uh, in, when you are listening. No, 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 we have 10 minutes. 
I actually, you know, I don't mind the silence. I think silence is good because it always takes time. I am someone who would never be able to ask a question right away after a talk because it takes. Let's just sit here a bit silent and <laughs> some a little question it comes it might be just really really important, you know. Unless someone is is uh, needs to go quickly to have a smoke, yeah. <laughs> See? I knew I knew it was coming. different styles. So I, I can actually, you give me an image and I can paint it. I mean, I always say that and then when I do it, it's, I think, oh no, I can't do it. But in a way, if you give me some time, I can, I think, copy everything. I'm kind of like a copyist. So the new thing with uh, um, actually working with Pierre Valblanc invited me to the Documenta um, working with him, um, I did a work for the Erste Bank in Wien um, where I did a big wall painting and so I had to show them what I want to do and for that I did a digital collage which I then just copied and that was actually the starting point for me to really work with the computer. So what it means is that I usually start with a very abstract expressionist, like smearing and splattering, like yeah. uh, And then I take the image on the computer, I just make a photo, go on the computer, and then I try to play around with, with uh, make, uh, make collages, and then I copy these collages. And while I do the collages, very often some things happen in the Photoshop and sometimes I copy these Photoshop effects. You don't see it in these images so much, but, um, and I think I should consciously work more with that because I like the idea of um, copying um, um, actually mistakes that happen when you work digitally. Um, uh, how should I say that? Yeah, it, it's something that yeah, I, I, I want to do more. But because I now work with a computer, I, you know, I, I can use everything, you know, it's like I even, yeah, like I can copy uh, a piece of um, sky, like this, this scenery, this moonshine over the water scenery, I copy it out of a, a painting, take it from the internet and then I copy it out, so it's probably to do with the restoration skill. Extremely good painter, but what's them? They're not um, 
you are able to use so many other material in art and trans come uh, what is in my life and also come on. and it's in terrible what you do it's really great art so it's a mix of German and English sorry but um, maybe someone can you can translate <laughs> I'm sure you understood what I wanted to say Okay, so congratulations to your show, and I'm very pleased that I came from Vienna to see your show in Salzburg. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm happy. I'm happy. I think that's good. And I think we can start the opening now. Yes, yeah. Thank okay. you, everyone, for listening. Unless there's still a question, is there another question? Someone's really wants to ask something. I think it can be asked uh, to you privately yes, because true. you'll be around all evening. Now it's you true. know how the okay. artist looks like, so okay. you can comment <laughs> here. <laughs> and I'm not going to hide, I promise. So, yeah, I want to say thank you very much to you both for this uh, wonderful conversation. I want to thank everybody for coming and thank you for the opportunity. We bought a camera room, this is now so off. It's a bisschen Geduld und wir auf den Kopf hin und her Danke.